Hello, welcome to the Inn at Laurel Point. My name is Ken Nakano, I'm the executive chef here. And this is my spot prawn uh, feature dish for the annual spot prawn festival for the Chef's Table Society. Uh, we have our star here, our West Coast spot prawn. It's a simple dish I'm making. Um, and I cut these sharp bits off here just to make things easier. You can or you, you don't have to, but I do. It just sort of makes things a little easier to get around and you don't get cut. So pretty much just the legs and the, uh, the sharp uh, nose bit. Alternatively, you can peel the tail and use the same uh, miso marinade to um, do the dish and serve with the asparagus cut up a little bit for maybe a little bit more composed. But for our purposes, it's more like an uh, appetizer, sort of like snack dish. Something you would watch or eat while you're watching the Sail GP or the Moto GP. That's what I uh, enjoy. Today it's going to be our spot prawns with a miso and garlic butter with some yuzu kosho. I'm using the red yuzu kosho. Uh, yuzu is a Japanese citrus uh, that's usually uh, mixed with chilies and it's a condiment for grilled meats but I like using it for this dish because it adds a little bit of brightness to the, the miso uh, nice deep earthy flavor to go with the sweetness of the spot prawn uh, the great thing is I mean we're using the, the yuzu kosho here but we planted some yuzu trees in our garden here so hopefully in the coming uh, future we'll be making our own yuzu kosho so that's kind of exciting so again lengthwise just cut the prawn straight through the head. Uh, and again, you can, you can or cannot do this. I like to do this way because you get the nice flavor of the char on the shell. We're not gonna flip these ones. We're just gonna put the, the marinade on top, but it allows you to get to the, mis the prawn miso inside. So when we serve with a baguette, uh, you'll get to enjoy that flavor as well. <clears throat> We had a great uh, day yesterday. We went out with uh, Dan from Salish Strait Seafoods. He took us out on his boat to get a few of these prawns so we can do our demo. Uh, fresh is best. We can't beat uh, catching your own seafood and then serving it up. It's fantastic. We're pairing this dish with some uh, asparagus. And again, the asparagus is just happening now. Uh, these asparagus are courtesy of Teresa from Star Hill Farm, just outside of Elk Lake. But then again, uh, please support your local farmer wherever you are, you're at, uh, getting your seafood or your local produce. The pairing for this, to go along with the, uh, the umami from the miso and the sweetness of the prawn, we've picked the artisan sake makers, Junmai Nama Sake. And that's got a nice uh, flavor profile that will really complement this, uh, the sweetness and the saltiness of this, uh, this dish. So pretty much just cut up, uh, cut them lengthwise. So we'll just let that sit on the pan. We're going to make the, uh, the marinade, so a little bit of butter. I believe it's three, uh, three tablespoons, or two, sorry, three teaspoons. And we don't want to brown it, just want to melt it a little bit. To this we add the shiro miso. The yuzu kosho. It's quite spicy, so you can add as much or as little as you like. I like the red one for the prawn because it's a, a bit of a rounder flavor. There's a green uh, yuzu kosho. It's quite a lot more uh, assertive in, in spice. So this one is good. And you just want to warm it through to blend them together. Once it's fairly mixed up here, we're gonna add the soy sauce. And the meeting. And also, oh, a 
little bit of garlic. I like the microplane, very handy for us. Makes uh, quick work of many uh, things, whether it's citrus zest or garlic, anything like that. Just a touch. And yeah, for this one, you can use gas barbecue charcoal. I like uh, using uh, charcoal. You get that nice, nice flavor, but you can also use gas. You can also do this in a cast iron frying pan. The key is to brush the, the mixture on top of the prawn and not flip it. You just want to get that charred flavor on the, the shell side. So we got it a little bit blended up like so. I'm just going to spoon this on top of the the prawn meat, just on the one side. Let that sit for a couple minutes. And then the asparagus, uh, really just simply wash, trim the ends. You can peel them if they're, they're bigger stalks, but they're um, quite uh, tender and lovely. So just a touch of olive oil. A little bit of salt. I'm just gonna put this on the grill. Won't take much, just want to get a little bit of the char flavor on there and then we're good to go. This year we're hoping for a great, uh, great summer and a great uh, spot prawn season. Please eat them often, go support your local fishermen. They're, uh, you, you'll see them for sale everywhere, so uh, be plenty around. And again, with a veg, I mean, I'm using asparagus here, but you can easily uh, use tomatoes or whatever is uh, zucchini, cucumbers, whatever is coming in, uh, in season certainly uh, will go well with this. Then here at the end, we have our patio open. So we'll be featuring spot prawns uh, weekly. Um, throughout the throughout the season, our garden will be producing many uh, different, uh, you know, kind of uh, native to here and some specialty products that we've selected. Uh, we'll have a lot of different things to offer, along with the many different seasonal seafoods and that that will be coming around. So again, just a light. Uh, light roast. We'll give it another couple of seconds here. Uh, for this one, um, you can certainly uh, cook some rice or even pasta would be good with this. We're serving it with uh, uh, baguette because it's more of an appetizer thing where you can sort of dip into the, the prawn juices and the, and the butter sauce that we're making with the miso. So there's some options there for you if you like. And then we'll go in with the prawns. And these, yeah, you just want to barely cook them. Uh, one of the, the big uh, uh, errors, I think, with spot prawns is people will overcook them, whether they boil them or they cook them too hard. 
And really you want them a little bit translucent in the middle, so they're nice and juicy and that retains that sweetness. When you overcook them, they get a little bit tough and rubbery. I don't know if you've ever had that. Uh, uh, it's not as nice. I mean, they're, they're still a beautiful product, but they're not optimum like uh, medium rare. So yeah, it's roughly maybe 90 seconds, uh, something like that, that we'll keep it on each side or this side only. And you'll see like this one, just as it gets charred on the top, then we're good to go. So you can see it doesn't take much cooking at all. It's barely been on there, but that's where you want. There'll be a little bit of carryover cooking for sure as it's happening right now on the plate, but that will make the, the nice timing for the, uh, for the texture. So that's kind of done here. This, um, we're gonna give it a little bit of squeeze of lime. I'm using lime because it's, will complement the, the yuzu flavor, which is more lime than, than lemon. Uh, just a little bit of this juice. And then the nori, we use a little bit of uh, nori just to sort of bring up a little bit of the ocean flavor. It kind of brings another level of depth to the, uh, the sweetness of the prawn and just sort of crisp it up a little bit. Not so much uh, heating it, but just sort of refreshing it over the, the coals. And you see I've julienned it into a fine, uh, fine slice. We just sort of sprinkle that over. Again, it's very uh, mild and subtle, but it adds a nice depth of flavor to the prawn. So we have the barbecued miso and garlic butter spot prawn and our asparagus from Star Hill Farm. A little bit of lime on this. Some of our garden, uh, garden garnish. We have some beautiful flowers and berries growing right now. And again, we like to serve it with a little bit of baguette. So we'll make a uh, There it is. And thank you very much. Bon appetit.